Welcome back to another episode of Cactus Quest. I'm your host, Hunter, and in today's episode, we are in Oaxaca. I like that. A little folding earth for you, huh? A little bit of bending. You like it when it bends? I know I do. So we're here in the uh, Tehuacan biosphere. We're at about 3,500 feet elevation, and we're looking for a particular plant that grows out of limestone. You guys, uh, you guys are going to be familiar with this plant, and uh, I'm super excited to be here. And we're here with uh, four of the ladies that work with the biosphere. So you have to have permission to come in here, which is good. They're very protective of their native flora. Oh yeah, we're just walking into the spot. You see that right there? You see that clump? We got clumps of mammalaria. There's gonna be so much good stuff down here. I can't even wait. Unbelievable textures and colors here in what I imagine is the, uh, the limestone. And above it, we've got, you see that there? Shout out to Felipe Otero. Yeah, baby. FO76 in the house. The homies on the cliff. Look at the ferocious spines. I actually walked over here because I just wanted to take a look. This is the first uh, Pachycereus weberi that I've been able to get close to. And this is, a, this is a really small plant. These grow to be, these are some of the largest columnar cacti uh, that there are. And as I was walking over here, I really had to watch my step because as I'm approaching, you see we've got uh, a bursera species. You know, starting to get a little chubby down here. You've got something else peeking out of the, the, the spot. But then if you look behind me right here, You've got a mammalaria species. Nice and white too. I am not 100% sure there are so many mammalarias. It's a little tough for me to be able to identify them all, but that is, uh, that is exciting. And then just a little further over here, and you've got the beautiful stressed out mammalaria right here with the heavy, heavy spination. And the plants in habitat seem to always develop way more intense spination than they do in cultivation like because this is basically that's its blanket it's protecting it from the sun it's using that to reflect back the uh, harsh ultraviolet rays and then look at that further further down we descend the Tehuacan Cuicatlan Biosphere Reserve is a protected natural area located on the Puebla Oaxaca border in the central region of Mexico covering an area of over 2 million hectares. That's damn near 5 million acres. It's also characterized by its semi-arid climate, but it has rich and diverse ecosystems which support a diversity of flora and fauna, including many endemic species found nowhere else in the world. In addition to its important natural values, the reserve also holds great cultural significance with numerous important archeological sites and a rich history dating to the pre-Columbian era. Despite challenges posed by human activities such as deforestation, agriculture, illegal hunting, and poaching, the Mexican government has established a Tehuacan biosphere and a comprehensive management plan for the reserve to protect its natural and cultural resources and to promote sustainable development. So right here, what we have is a nice little rich pocket of biodiversity. So, you know, we're here under the bridge and uh, you've got a bunch of stuff. So you've got members of the cactus family. You can see how the root has come down. The plant has gotten broken off at some point and just new stem going up. But right here, we've got a uh, species of sedum and it's even in flower here. You can see that beautiful little sedum flower. This is a really t tough spot to film at, but uh, I wanted to show you that. So you can kind of see it's growing directly out of the rock here and just below it, dangling, drooping, just a real pendulous um, Mammillaria carnea. And if you look right back over here, you can see little baby sedums popping up. And those are members of the Crassula family. You got more right up here. Uh -huh. Then you've got these beautiful Hectias as well. And then you've got the Agave Oteroi. Uh, like I said, it's a bit, a bit tricky to be up here, but uh, I think the next time I won't have the backpack on. And plenty of shit, all different types of shit. Actually on a closer inspection, I'm looking at these things 
I don't know if that's the same plant that I'm looking at over there. The, the rosettes look smaller. This is a different plant. It's all, it could be a sedum as well. Um, look at the texture on it. A member of the Crassula family. And look at them, they're very miniature, extremely miniature. And they're growing everywhere. Out of every little crack. See it there? Right here. All right. Let me give you an idea of the size. Right, there's my hand. They're very little, little miniature uh, crassulas. So we've got a beautiful, beautiful colored Hectia species here. I, uh, I'm not super familiar with the Hectia, so I don't know which one it is. You have that same sedum, that first sedum that we saw, uh, definitely growing all around it. And what's really cool for all of my mam folks out there, so, um, you have the Mammillaria crucidra complex. And there are a few different plants in that complex. This is one of them right there. This is Mammillaria huichlipotlii. And it's named after an Aztec god. And you can see here, you've got a little bit of recruitment going on. So you have that little tiny seedling popping up. And this is the first one that we've seen. I've seen a few that I thought might be. Then you've got that, look at that. Look at that. Vicious little, little tight note of Oteri. Oteroi. Mammillaria weechlipotlii, about to flower, no less. Man, that is so cool. And you've got another one right here. And then, oh, the holy grail of agaves right here. I mean, depending on who you ask, it's a real toss up for me. I, I, it's hard to say, you know, whether it's Titanotas or uh, Utahensis. But I'm gonna have to go with the home team, honestly. But I mean, look at the viciousness. Let's get further up the mountain and see what else we can uh, what else we can find here. Look at that little little pair, right? You got the you got the Weechlipotli and the Carnea, and look at that rock, man. Look at that limestone. And it's unusual to see some of my favorite plants growing under some of the same trees that give uh, the baby saguaros their protection for the first years here. You got the Palo Verde trees, or for the people that have been watching for a long time, I originally called them uh, Palo Santo. <laughs> so here you have the uh, Euphorbia antisyphilitica. And you, if you guys have been watching the channel for a minute, then you saw the Coila video. This is actually growing with a lot of the Areocarpus and a lot of Lophophora. And here, down at the base, you've got another one of those Mammillaria weechlipotles. And you can see this one, the variability with this plant is that sometimes they will have these central spines and sometimes they will not. So here's one of the plants that does exhibit that, that characteristic. And if you come right here, you see here is another example and it's, it's very inconsistent. So sometimes they're there, sometimes they are not, but uh, that's the plant. And then look at that there, holy, hit your knees and weep. Mark, oh my gosh. So here in the, uh, on the uh, desert floor in the forest of Cephalosirius, you've got this beautiful pharaoh cactus, Latispinus. Look at those, look at those spines, man. They're just so thick and red. And it's got that fruit right there. You can see, if you look in there, you can actually see ants are squirming around on the nectar glands because all pharaoh cactus produce a little bit of nectar and that nectar is a uh, is like a little they trade off the nectar for a little pollination effort by the ants and uh, we we uh, went to a spot where these were growing when we were in Leon Guanajuato but I didn't go the w direction they went and I missed them so this is the first time I've ever seen this in habitat very satisfied mm, would you take a look at that there you know it seems like you go out there and you just find the cool stuff you get the variegated Otero eye. Look at that. Look at the striping on it. Don't you wish you could have that in cultivation? Huh? Look at that. Absolutely flawless. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why this pharaoh cactus has been given the name pharaoh cactus robustus because it grows quite robustly, unlike 
it grows a lot more like an echinoceros, to be quite honest. Um, I wonder if there's any phylogenic studies on that. Maybe they're closely related. Who knows? So just in case you guys are wondering why I rock the knee pad, it's so I can just do this, right? I can get down here, and then I can go like, man, look at that Coryphantha right there. Look at these. So I think this is Coryphantha conifera. I'm not 100% sure. It could be a number of different things, but I'll tell you what it is. It's a Coryphantha that I am very excited to see. Oh man, I love the Corys with the heavy spines. Hopefully we can see one of these with the nice yellow flowers. Let's keep on going. Okay, so we got a nice clump here. And you can tell it's a Coryphantha. You see on the top of the, uh, on the top of the tubercle there, you've got that little divot. That's a, a dead giveaway. If the plant is not in flower, that little divot is a dead giveaway that it is a Coryphantha and not a Mammillaria or what have you. So as we continued on the hike, which by the way, was a 10 mile hike round trip and we left at midnight, got into the field at six in the morning, pretty hectic, but this is what we came to see. Agave Titanota oteroi, which was growing side by side with all the beautiful mammillarias, growing with all these dazzling hectias with the stress colors that just make your knees buckle. And I am less convinced that taxonomy is it, it's just scientific opinions. I, I mean, I could be wrong, and I'm open to being wrong, but every single time I get into an area and I see these plants in habitat, I can only think deep in my bones that they just obviously don't read the literature because they never seem to follow the descriptions. This is clearly what fits. That plant right there that you just saw is Agave Oteroi. This is Agave Kerchovi, which grows with it. And I would say probably about 70 to 80% of the plants that were growing at this Agave Oteroi type locality did not even fit the description for Agave Oteroi. So you look at it and you say, well, wait a minute, is the description written off this tiny little subsect of the population? And if so, why is it not a subspecies? Why is this a true species? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just an amateur botanist collector just asking questions on the internet. What the fuck do I know? Now, Oaxaca is known. They are very, very known, world famous for their delicious food. Their cuisine, I will say, is exquisite. So after 10 miles in the field, sweating, dying, feeling like, yeah, I mean, you're just going to fall apart and crumble into a heap of dust, you got to eat. You know, it's important to, to, to fill your body with nourishing, loving food. I mean, look at the way she's wedging that fucking masa for the tortillas, dude. It doesn't, it honestly does not get better than this. And stay tuned in the next video. We're going to be going further into Oaxaca, down into Puebla. We're going to be looking at Focaria purpusi. We're going to be looking at Mammillaria crucigera. It's going to be badass. Let's go, baby. Come on. If you're not subscribed to the channel, you need to get subscribed to the channel right now. This is the place to be. If you're a plant nerd, you need to hit that subscribe button now. Seriously, though, do it. Why not? What do you got to lose? Lágrimas de adiós se van secando.